It is now 10.06 and time for the Saturday special with Michael Swirling. Griffin. Griffin Queener. May I ask you a personal question? Sure, go for it. Are you in a trance? Did you drive here in a trance today? I must have. I mean, I can't even get my headphones working right now, so. Hey, and I'm hearing a bunch of weird stuff. Uh, you, you need to get Richard B. Luther, our esteemed engineer. I'm hearing a lot of artifacts. It's going to screw up this radio program altogether so that I'm going to want to turn off everything and leave because there's okay. a lot, all kinds of horrible interference. It might have something to do with the audio condom that we have. I don't know. But, yeah, no wonder. Yeah, you you, you so looked like you were sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, discombobulated. And now I am, too, because I hear this horrible stuff. Anyhow, hurry. Before before Richard... Le oh, here comes Richard B. Luther II. Yeah, it's just awful, awful, awful. But uh, do you hear all that stuff, Richard B. Luther II? Those artifacts? No, he doesn't hear it. That, that's what always happens. Yeah, it, it's it's... It's in everybody. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to live radio. It's live, terrible radio, but it is live radio. You don't hear that. that, that it's, it's only in your headphones. It's only in my headphones. And it's in his, too. So, well, well can we make it so that it's not in my headphones? <laughs> Cause, so I can do the program? Oh, my God. This is terrible. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'm hearing an echo from, I'm, I'm hearing like six, sec, six or seven seconds later. You know what? I'm getting so sick of this, I'm just going to start the program. Are you ready? Here. Oh. It's all terrible. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, um, yeah, everything needs to be adjusted. Um, but welcome. There's no sound at all. There's no sound at all. A brighter day is here. Good morning. May we br good morning. A brighter day. You, you are witnessing, ladies and gentlemen, the meltdown of your favorite radio station. May we bring yeah, and, and we don't know where we don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully we'll get our bleep together because we had a wonderful program planned for for today, and it looks like it's going down the toilet. So, uh, I don't know, Richard is coming back. I'm in the control room now, and I'm talking, and I think I'm being heard. Can I go back in there now? What was wrong with it so that it was blowing my eardrums out? I've never heard that before. Okay, well, here. Here. Griffin, come here, sit down. Good morning. Now stay right here on KSCO Radio. All right, and now we should be getting back to the program with Michael Swirling, and everything will run perfectly and smoothly as planned. We can just chalk those four minutes up of chaos to uh, casual KSCO uh, happenings. Well, I don't... Casual? It wasn't very casual. God. I mean, I guess not. All right, well, here's the promo. Let's see if the promo... This is actually a good promo that I heard on the way down from, from the city. And by the way, that's what I meant when I asked if you were in a trance. I got sidetracked by the, by the technical screw-ups. Do you want to know what I mean by yeah, were yeah. you driving in a trance? Absolutely. The traffic, w there was no problem. It's a wonderful time of the day to drive between San Francisco and San Fr Santa Cruz. 
you know, uh, either yeah. on the coast. I wasn't on the coast. I was on I was on 101 and 85 mm. and 17. There was no traffic at all, but there were people that were like they they were like in a trance. <laughs> they were driving like like 35 miles an hour when they should have been driving 65 or 70 on the freeway, and nobody knew why. And there were people driving in the fast lane that that. That, that I could not that I'm a crazy person. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that I'm an old man who drives like an old man. Wow, and they were slow for you. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, I yeah, mean, I, I, have I no, didn't think no that idea. I wouldn't make it to the station, but it was very irritating. So I was wondering if there was something in the air, something in the atmosphere, something that is making people act like they're in a trance. I mean, not that I know of, but it seems possible. I've seen plenty of slow drivers recently. And, uh, what but is I've also the deal? Does it have something to do with the PG&E thing? Maybe. Maybe we shut off the power, and now all the robots are slowing down. I, I, it's got to be something. But it makes no sense. Why didn't I feel like going slow myself? Oh, I know why. Because I was in San Francisco that was unaffected mm. by, by the... So you think that has something to do with it? Maybe, I want to get to the bottom of the problem. Is there anybody out there on the roads right now listening to your favorite radio station? It is your favorite radio station, even with the, the screw-up for the you know a few minutes, right? It is. I, I like to think it still is. We have some credits with you. Is there anybody out there who's driving now who feels like I do that there's there's something there's something wrong that people are driving like it's like a, a like like a, a a 45 rpm record this is going to date me being played at 33 okay all right well i'm just fascinated by what is going on here anyhow here's the promo write this down and michael wants you to make a promo and i'm going to tell you and you can just hear me this is for a saturday special promo <laughs> Deborah Elston is the founder of Santa Cruz Neighbors. She's worked extensively with the Santa Cruz Police Department. She has worked extensively on the homeless problem in Santa Cruz. She helps to organize events here in the city of Santa Cruz. She knows about the recall that's taking place in Santa Cruz. And now she's had her truck stolen from her driveway. And she's mad and she's not going to take it anymore. And she is the guest on the Saturday special with Michael Swirling this Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon on your What on Earth Are We Going to Do Now radio station. Okay, look, I lost my notes. But Rosie was on the recording, so I just used her voice. Hope that's not too lazy, but at least we got the facts right. That was one hell of a promo. That's the best promo I've ever heard. I'm going to retire. I'm not going to do promos anymore. People would say, MZ, you do really good promos. Not, not, not after that. I mean, I, my, my ego has been shrunk down to nothing after that. I, I don't know how I can ever um, recover. So let's just play the Crossfire music. Deborah Elston. Hi, Deborah. Good morning. I've known you as Deborah Maddox. Yep. All these years. Yep. And when I came in and saw you, <laughs> I said, wait a minute. That's not Deborah Elston. <laughs> I know. Deborah you always Maddox. have to go back to the maiden name. Yeah. All right. But anyhow, uh, gee, I didn't let the cat out of the bag, did I? You were, no, you were very proud of your background and heritage oh and everything. Your yeah, folks fourth, were fourth pillar, generation. pillars of the community. Um, okay, so um, you and I grew up in Santa Cruz. Yep. Right? Went to Santa Cruz High. Yeah. And um, um, we have seen a lot of changes come to our town. And are, are, we, are, are we shocked and horrified at what's happened? Or are we gratified by some of what's happened and shocked and horrified at other things? What, what are we? I'm confused. <laughs> um, it's really hard um, because I, I do what I do in this community and I look at being in the middle. 
the 60 percent in the middle of the voices that really don't get heard the families the hard-working people and that's where i reside in the middle and it is very difficult to wrap my head around what has transpired or what has gotten loose in this town um well it started with the university can we agree with that I think that's to when, a certain that's extent. when a big change and you would expect there would be a big change when Absolutely. a major university campus opens what was it 55 years ago or more right it was Something uh, like that. late 60s okay. that they approved and thought that this would be a really good idea S I know it opened in 65 right it, it actually opened right. in 65 so uh, in, in any case and I went to UCSC for three of the four years the, the other one right in the sandwiched in the middle I was at Berkeley I couldn't go there I had to go to San Jose State oh okay <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, so that was UCSC, and, and back then, it was a welcome change to the community. Absolutely. And since then, I think a lot of us local yokel people uh, have grown to almost wish it hadn't happened. In uh, some ways, uh -huh. um, I think that, um, thank goodness for the engineering building <laughs> that it, it got put in, I'm not sure what year, but when they started going to normal subjects, I think we did get some good positive changes, and um, that was reflected even in the students. So I, I see the positives and the negatives now um, about the university, and I work very closely with the university as they are my neighborhood's neighbor, and they really do listen to what the neighbors have to say. In fact, we had a couple meetings with them earlier this year to discuss um, the issues that travel through our neighborhood. So that's that's where I'm at with the university. To me, they're my neighbor, and I have yeah, to and, and work they, with they, them. They were, what they were and continue to be a wonderful resource. Correct. I don't think they've ever been properly integrated into the community w what do you think about that i mean I, I'd, I'd like to see a better relationship between the community of santa cruz and the university of california branch that is located here wouldn't yeah. you i think it got better with the last agreement that was made when um ryan coonerty uh, george blumenthal was uh, new um to the campus and ryan coonerty was on um, city council and they came up with the agreement um, to cap it off at 19.5. I think our recent vote um, last time to stay at, you know, no more growth um, was a definite, definite commentary to the state about where we stand. Um, I think we don't want to be overridden, and we are right at that cusp, I think, of of do we want to be a town with a university or do we want to be a university with, oh, by the way, there's a little town here. Um, <laughs> so I, I think we're at that cusp. From, I, from whose perspective, the universities, I guess, because they're not subject to anything that the rest of, any rules I, I, and regulations that the rest of us are. Right, They right. can do whatever they want, right? Yeah, we can't tell the state what to do. Yeah. So, but I think those talks, and I think a lot of people at the university, um, agree with the community. Back up just a second. Um, you said we can't tell the state what to do. Uh, isn't that just what we did with our vote? Yeah, with the with the vote. Yeah, to to, to cap it at nineteen and a half thousand. Correct me if I'm wrong. I remember it was way way back. It was supposed to be twenty seven and a half thousand, about the size of Berkeley. Right. 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 And over the years, people started resenting that and rejecting that and now apparently there was something that uh, that's that made it official but not really because you like you just then you went on to say we can't tell the state what to do right but we're we can tell the state what we want hope, what, what we hope they'll do <laughs> right yeah um and they are going through the long-range development plan again currently um, we actually have um, some board members um, sitting 
on and neighborhood people sitting on that LRDP long range um, plan. Mm -hmm. They are doing an outreach to the community, which is um, just recently been posted. And um, I think they're listening. And we have a new chancellor who I haven't met yet, but looking forward to that conversation. We will try to get the new chancellor on the Saturday special so that, that person wonderful. can speak with our community. Yeah. She's they, have, they have their own radio station, but I, I don't know how many people in the community listen to the radio station. I right. don't think too many. I don't, I don't mean for that to be the arrogant statement that it sounds like it is, but um, we are the community. Our, our station is the commercial radio station, and one of the things I've always wanted to do is use the radio station, the talk radio station, to bring the university and the town closer together. Yeah. It's, just, it's just been a pipe dream of mine. That's all it's been, unfortunately. It hasn't gotten past that. Maybe it can and will now with a new chancellor. Right. Nothing against the old chancellor. No. Things just didn't happen, you know? Maybe they will well, now. Well, she's from right. Riverside, and they have a lot of good programs that are integrated into their community from, from Riverside. I've been there, actually, in a town gown conference. Mm. So I really was impressed with Riverside. All right. Now, so so onward to the most important issues facing our wonderful city that I was born and raised in. I believe you were, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're both natives. And... Um, there was a time when I was sort of embarrassed to admit, you know, traveling that I was from Santa Cruz because it had such a crazy reputation. But now the place has been transformed from a place, from a place on a map to a brand. You've seen the Santa Cruz, the big Santa Cruz red dot, you know, that has Santa Cruz in big, you know, diagonal uh, yellow letters. And this is a, this is a, a brand that's, that's a worldwide brand now. And people see that brand and they're actually envious, you know. And what I think is so cool about Santa Cruz and why KSCO is able to reflect, it's such such an easy thing to do, is is the, our city of license, I believe, has more characters per square inch <laughs> than any place on the planet, including Berkeley, including uh, San Francisco, you know, which have plenty of characters on their own. But nothing of the density, nothing of the CD, I'll call it the CD, the character density. Nobody has a higher character density than Santa Cruz. And that's what we like to reflect on KSEO. So, are you a character? I, I don't, I've never thought about myself as being a character of that. Okay, well let's talk, <laughs> I, I've been told you're a firebrand. Not even realizing that it's you, whom I already knew. Right. Right? So I was, you saw how surprised I was when I walked in the studio. Right. Deborah, you're that Deborah, <laughs> different name, Deborah. So, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about. Let's not just bitch and moan about what's going on. Let's let's see if we can use. Yeah, the I don't do that to, anymore. I do <clears throat> things. Okay, so what are, what are you doing to fix what? Gosh, well, I've been working for 19 years um, with neighborhoods, and. As we know, when we grew up here, we were in and out of everybody's house. We knew every neighbor on the block. And I had gone away to work over the hill and came home and realized neighbors didn't know neighbors. Um, I came back home to take care of my parents um, as they were both ill and um, realized that neighbors didn't know neighbors. I think the technology played into that. We have uh, garage door openers where people just drive in their houses and they don't have to talk to their neighbors anymore. And so I never thought about that. The garage door, which everybody thought was a boon, has really destroyed neighborhoods and destroyed people's... In a sense. Uh, uh, socialism. And the TV. Uh, not, not socialism, but yeah, that's the wrong word. I'm trying to... Socialness. Yeah, the social, the connections yeah. between neighbors. And, and that was long before the Internet. Right. See, I oh, think, right. I think, uh, let's do a first here on KSCO. Let's propose here for the first time anywhere that garage door openers be banned. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but it does take an effort for neighbors to connect these days, I think, more so than usual, especially the families. They're so busy. They've got their kids. They've got their jobs. They just are trying to maintain and 
you know, carry on their lives. Um, so when I came back and a group of us uh, started Santa Cruz Neighbors, there was 11 of us that said, you know, everybody should have a neighborhood. And my parents had helped start the Westlake neighborhood um, over issues and what to do and how to do it. And so I felt like really I've just been carrying that on. But then when 11 of us got together throughout the town, we decided, you know, every neighborhood should have the establishment. And there were about seven other neighborhoods in that 11 that had been established for a really long time, like since the 70s and the 80s when they had phone trees. <laughs> I would never do this with and phone And remember trees. Neighborhood Watch. Right, which Neighborhood Watch still exists, and we still use it very much. But so I go back to the reason why I'm the lady just before us on the show was talking about following your passion. I think that um, I'm just trying to recreate the Santa Cruz I grew up in, in knowing your neighbors and your neighbors almost become your family in a sense. And I feel I feel like that about my neighborhood and my neighbors next to door to me. Um, but so I just try to connect all the neighbors that they can. The best communication creates that neighborhood watch almost by default, um, as long as they're all communicating together and talking together. And then if they have issues in their neighborhood, um, they can come to Santa Cruz Neighbors, and we can help with that because most likely either we've been through it personally or other neighbors that we know of in our network can come and help them get through a court case or deal with a party house or deal with a gang house or, um, gosh, I don't know what to do about this, this. There's just so many things. It's so vast. Um, so we want to be that resource for them. Uh, but I go into <laughs> this week, I became part of the Santa Cruz statistics. What happened? Oh, yeah, because of the theft of your my husband's truck was stolen out of our driveway. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine I was a little taken back by all of that, and I went through every single emotion I possibly could have this week. Um, mad, sad, do we have to put up with this in our town? This is unacceptable in our town. Um, and then, of course, I start with the network and going out and asking questions to every person I know who's had a vehicle stolen you know, what did you do? What did you go through? How did this happen? All this. And so I have to tell you, it's a happy, um, we're happy in the neighborhood again because I got a phone call from one of our finest in Santa Cruz Police Department. Um, and our vehicle was recovered last night. At 1.30 in the morning, did we they, get the did, phone call. Did they get the person who did it? Unfortunately, no. So I have to give a big shout-out to Officer Sean Terry, who's a canine officer. Um, yeah, Luna was, Luna was disappointed there wasn't anybody in the truck because the dog would have <laughs> had a fun time. Um, uh -oh. But the truck was just recovered. It's in really good condition. Um, but I did my well, little... That was, that was considerate of the thief. Yeah, yeah. Except for I did my little detective work this morning. Of course, we got it in the dark, and so we didn't know what was really in it. Ah. So there All were right. drugs <laughs> left, yeah. drug, drug paraphernalia left in the, in yeah. the truck. Surprise, which surprise, Which goes right? to so, a whole yeah, other con conversation about okay. Santa Cruz. Yeah, which we should, uh, I don't know whether we want to cover that right now, but let, let, me, let me sort of be a little less flippant here um, and carry the discussion into a serious discussion. Um, I think the biggest uh, problem facing the community is the high cost of rent and the high cost of real estate. And, of course, the homeless problem that results partially from that. I mean, a lot of people say that you got to recognize the real problem of homelessness is drug addiction. And, and you know, mental and, case, and, 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 and all mental that. Mental issues, yes. Okay, so we have more than our share yes. here. Why is that? And how can we fix that? Oh, that's the million-dollar question. Yes. Well, what do you think? You must have thought about it a lot more than I have. Um, 
Well, I served on the Homeless Leadership Council, and then I also went through the strategic um, plan, all-in plan. Um, it's really multifaceted, and we live in a beautiful place. We have a beautiful climate. Uh, we have services here, and I, I, I think we can attract a lot of people who feel that they can come here and if they do want help, they can get services. So it, um, we, we are a very generous community. And the only thing that I can really say is in some of my research about what other communities have done is they have put policies and guidelines in place. Um, that create a structure um, for everyone in the community to follow. I mean, you and I, we follow the rules. We follow the rules of the road. Otherwise, we'd be in accidents every day. Um, we have to follow the rules. Uh, I don't know what it is about this community, but some people don't want to have the rules for um, the people who are homeless. And I can't say that that's a good solution. I think we need to be a community that is the parent for some of these people and that we impose policies and guidelines. Um, in fact, the last time I did speak to city council, I talked about a policy of compassion. And that policy would be that we are a very generous community. We um, will be happy to help you get back home, we'll happy, be happy to help you get services, we'll be happy to take care of you, we'll be happy to ultimately, hopefully, get a roof over your head. But if you choose not to use our services, then unfortunately, maybe this isn't the place for you to stay. And that's where I draw the line. I think we need to be parents, and parents have rules. You have to have rules when you grow up. Um, I think that's what we need to do in this community. Dr. Robert Marbutt, who is a renowned um, homeless advocate uh, from Texas, has gone around our country and in com many communities in the state of California. Um, he actually does his research in that community and then comes back to that community and says, listen, these are the rules you're kind of breaking. Um, these are the rules that you should follow. And he has seven guiding principles, which are pretty phenomenal. And uh, they're guiding principles that everybody follows. And it works in those communities. So I think we need to come to an understanding of the people who are houseless also have to be accountable to our community as well. Okay. Um... So, the housing question is a whole nother yeah, it issue. Is. It's huge because and of the university, because of Silicon Valley. It's and I think there's a. It, it might be about to change. Uh, I have read a little bit about what our governor has signed into law recently, and most of what he has signed into law, I am against. But the accessory dwelling uh, ordinance that. I believe he signed into law just in the last day or two. Right. I was going to say something's really recent there. Yeah. yeah. Um, is is a good thing where they have uh, basically, um, I heard, I haven't verified this, and if there's anybody out in the listening audience right now, uh, please call 479-1080 if you know a lot more about this than, than I obviously do. But I think it's a wonderful step in the right direction to lift the rules uh, that have made uh, accessory dwelling unit construction very, very costly. And and if you think about it, you talk about affordable housing. Construction costs are construction costs. They're, they're <laughs> Unless you have some benefactor who's paying you know, for the labor and materials for the construction, that doesn't happen very often that I can think of. The only way to, to have at least semi-affordable housing is if the land is free. And the land is free if your backyard 
that you bought years ago or inherited years ago or anything like that, it, that's free. The radio station that I bought, third, the property that I bought uh, almost 30 year, 29 years ago, coming up in uh, January 31st, this land is essentially free land. And there's, there's a, a lot of it that could be used that I would like to be used for affordable housing, where the land component is free because it's already paid for, you know, mm -hmm. and it's theoretically in, in, inflated in value. But if if I continue to own it, then then there will have the low Prop 13, and while well, that lasts, who knows what where that's going. But for right now, the property tax that that I pay for this property is affordable. Mm -hmm. And as waterfront real estate, the the next person who owns this property probably will pay five times what I pay. At least. You know, uh, for, for property, to, under the terms of Prop 13, that I understand a lot of people out there are gunning for, that they want to, uh, they want to they wanna make, make it so that, you know, people who've owned their property for a long time, even though they're on fixed incomes, the, the property has to be at a par with current values, even though the people can't afford them and will be forced out of their properties. That's true. Um, so I think that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. I don't know if it will, but I do know that there's an uncomfortable number of people who want that to happen. And these are the kinds of people who never saw a tax they didn't like. Okay. Right. These these are these are leeches in my. These are people who who don't work for a living. They leech for a living. That's my feeling. And I'm I'm sorry. I'm not mincing any words. But there's a bunch of those people out there, and um, there if 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 Prop 13 goes away, it's going to be a somehow disaster. because those people prevailed. Okay. 479-1080, if you want to join the conversation here on the Saturday special, it's Deborah Elston and MZ talking about things that matter here in Santa Cruz. Um, I, I would love to have an extended discussion with anybody who wants to engage with me, whether it's a listener or whether it's a special guest or two or three, on what we can do and should do to make housing costs more affordable. And I've been screaming for years and years that what we should be doing is build, baby, build. Oh, we don't want this place turned into another San Jose. It's terrible over there. Guess what? I think it's worse over here. Because at least over there, they, they, made, they, they have some provision for infrastructure. And here, the hysteria from 40 years ago, oh, it'll induce growth, when there was money available to widen Highway 17 and to widen Highway 1. That's never going to happen again, in my opinion. I hope I'm wrong, obviously. There is no money for, for, for uh, 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 um, improving the infrastructure. And the people came anyhow, making, in my opinion, things a whole lot worse here. Yes, a whole lot worse here than in Silicon Valley. Yes, a whole lot worse here than in San Francisco, where I live part-time. Okay? And uh, to me, it's because idiots are running this place. And a lot of the people, even people like me, who voted for uh, artificial growth control in 1978, because I didn't want this place to turn into a San Jose, and that was the hysterical message that I was responding to when I voted for Measure O in the city, I think it was, or Measure 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 O in the city and what else? Measure J in the county in 1978. Right. I think even the most conservative people you know, who, who uh, you know, when they get into the voting thing, they say, oh, no one's looking. Hey, yeah, I'm definitely for keeping, uh, you know, for free enterprise, but I don't want this place to grow, so I'm going to vote for growth control, whatever the hell that means. And that wrecked the place. Well, I, I think that you you need to... Uh, um I've been in. I've been in a lot of developers' meetings. Um, I've also been accused of working for the developer, which I very much try not to. I talk about being in the middle, even when I go in and talk to a developer about what their project is. I I'm trying to look at what are the benefits for the neighbors. Um, my point of view is that change is coming, so. 
do we want to be a part of that change and shape the new project or talk about the new zoning and be part of it? Um, because we can't stop the change. The change is coming. So my, my solution to it, and yes, it is my personal point of view, but it works um, a lot at times because neighbors have great ideas that the developers hadn't even thought about. So if you all can sit in a meeting together and discuss it um, and look for the best solution for the neighbors as well as the developer and the projects, then it kind of works for the whole community. And I've actually been through that with a lawsuit in my own neighborhood um, with a developer with a project that really wasn't a good idea. And then the second developer came in after the lawsuit and said, what would you like? And we sat down and they wanted higher numbers. We wanted lower numbers. And we compromised and came with a solution in the middle. And the project that they built and that's there today is wonderful and part of our neighborhood. Um, so I, I see the positiveness. So it, of so it can it can work if people aren't adversarial. Correct. <laughs> okay, Absolutely. great. Let, we do have some phone calls now. 479-1080 is the phone number to call. That's area 831. If you want to be on the program here, the Saturday special with MZ and Deborah Elston talking about um, how to fix uh, the problems in Santa Cruz. I sure would like to do that. Wouldn't you, Deborah? Uh, yeah, but I don't uh, have a magic wand. <laughs> uh, well, that's uh, the, we, the, our magic wand is our, our brilliant audience. You have to be very intelligent in order to be accepted as a KSEO listener and obviously a caller. I'm always open to solutions. Yeah, okay. And so let's see if we can... Uh, I do like the now. doers in our community. Next, uh, okay, uh, John in SoCal. Welcome to the Saturday special. Yes, uh, good morning, Inji. Um, <clears throat> having been born and raised in the area also, uh, I think you put your finger on it. The university was you know, the impetus for a lot of speculation in real estate and caused tremendous amount of that increase in price and lack of affordability. And then um, I think well, that... Only because they're not subject to the rules that the rest of us are. That, that's the only reason. Uh, other than that, you know, my my passionate statement, you know, uh, uh, two minutes, five minutes ago, has to do with the 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 people who ra who ran the board of supervisors and the city council in Santa yeah. Cruz, who I don't think are very bright all these years because right. they restricted growth, thinking that if they said no to it, that they could stop it, and and they just couldn't. It came anyhow. And this t and now, when there's no money available for for uh, um, for infrastructure improvement, then hey, uh, we're all toast, you know. Yes. Well, I, I do uh, wish that we could uh, have more say in the growth of the university and restricting that, and also um, requiring that they be a responsible citizen in this community if they want to be a part of the community, because they haven't really stepped up to provide the housing that they should, I think morally should, morally, morally ethically should, although I think that at one point they may have tried with George Blumenthal, but I don't know the details on that. Um, I, I think that that, to me, would be a good place to start. And then also, I don't, and then the, whole, the issue of the homeless, I, I really would have a hard time blaming the homeless. It's such a, you know, mixed, um, uh, bag every you know, a lot of individuals in each situation. Now, John, right. you are a duly recognized listener of KSEO, which means you are extremely intelligent. <laughs> you must not. I can't allow you to cop out on this. You have to give us a, 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 some some idea of how to solve the homeless problem. Well, I think the homeless um, issue is a nationwide issue. Well, more than nationwide, but I think that it needs to be dealt with more on a nationwide basis and trying to keep people connected to their families wherever they have called their home initially. I agree with that. And, yeah, and, it's, it, and I think that it's wonderful that Santa Cruz is a compassionate community. And also there are constitutional rights people have, too. So we have to consider all those. And so, uh, you know, I don't want to just come down hard on the homeless and... But, I'll, I'll, you know, although I think that uh, also we need to expect that people can, you know, try to take responsibility 
for themselves if they, you know, as much as they are able to. So, um, now, who can argue know, with I that? I sure can. I want to thank John and Soquel for calling KSCO, the Saturday special at 479-1080. Yes. Here comes Mary in Midtown. Well, wait a minute. Mary, hold on. You're on, but I want to say something. Because I've just received a disturbing email, a very disturbing email from Larry O'Neill. It says, Michael, it's 42 minutes past the hour and you're still off the air. I've got to go. Good luck. We love you and KSEO, Larry O'Neill. Griffin, Griffin Queener, <laughs> uh, we, we love Larry for loving <laughs> us. And I'd like to think that he's all wet right now. Is he? Uh, if by wet you mean wrong, then yes. yes. So we are on the air. We are on the air. I mean, that's why these callers can hear us right now. And we're calling <laughs> up, <so. laughs> Just to make sure, is it possible that we're off the air where Larry is? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't really have the knowledge to confirm or deny Larry, that. Larry, I want, Larry isn't listening anymore because he said he's got to go. I just wonder if he's listening on the stream or if he's listening on one of the FM channels, you know, with the, with the power outages and everything, maybe the link from KSCO to our, our mountain sites of our three FM translators, maybe he's listening on FM. Maybe. maybe. That, that's, uh, here's a message, everybody. Not that we don't want you to listen on FM. We do want you to listen to, uh, on, to KSCO on FM. We're on in three locations on the FM dial that you can tune into, uh, some are better than others, depending upon where you are. But if you listen on AM 1080, you can hear us from north of Sacramento to south of Bakersfield in the daytime. You know, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a giant signal, for sure. But I want to thank Larry O'Neill for saying, telling us that we're off the air, but he, he, he wasn't specific enough. I wish he would let, let us know whether we're off the air with our worldwide stream with our FM 107.9, with our FM 95.7, with our FM 104.1. And I know we're not off the air on 1080 because we're getting these wonderful callers, as Griffin <laughs> pointed out and made me feel stupid. You know, anyhow, that, but that was very good, Griffin Queener, because, you know, it's absolutely true. I feel like a fool for asking you if we're on the air because how could we not be on the air if we're getting these wonderful callers? Okay, take next. Whoops. You know, the, uh, the caller that I said, wait, I just hung up on. Please call back. It's me. Uh, no, 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 no. Keith, <laughs> Keith, you want to talk about traffic here. I promise I won't yeah. hang up on the caller again. <laughs> okay. But you, go ahead. You're on now. Yeah, I want, I want to give you a radio check. You're, you're coming in over the stream and over the air just fine. Oh, they, uh, bless you. I am... I'm sitting in the worst traffic I know. I work in the Bay Area all the time, but my town, my town, Santa Cruz, is just so dumb. I've seen this since I was 12 years old. I could see this anti-expansionist nonsense. So here I am sitting in 40 minutes of traffic to go about three miles. And you know what, though? You know what? I really take a lot of solace in. We get a new guardrail every few years. Isn't that great? Well, um, it it, uh, it provides a safety against a head-on collision, but yeah, even but if it wasn't was there, the fun. traffic is so slow that a head-on collision won't probably cause any damage at all, right? Yeah, well, my point is that they keep changing the guardrail. The last one was fine. It's been there. It hasn't even been there very long. They, they do this every few years. And then they repave the same strip of road every time when the rest are going to heck. It's okay, to, it's, 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 okay to, <laughs> it's okay to say hell on KSCO. I'm my anyway. daughter's right next to me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I can't answer that question. I just think it has something to do with burning up all of the uh, budget so that you can ask for more next year and get it. I, I think it's make work to support the union companies around here like Granite, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, they repair a guardrail, tear it down, and then make a new one two years later. It's a lot of fun and money and traffic yep anyway have a good one thank you so much for calling 479-1080 which we hope others will do okay mary in midtown my apologies for hanging up on you i did not mean to do that i meant to take your call which i'm doing now thank you mc um thank you so much for your um guest this morning 
very erudite and articulate. Oh, thank God you said erudite. I thought you were going to say arrogant. <laughs> no. No, we get that from a lot of other people in town. Right. But not this morning. Okay. Really quick. Talk the into reason, the microphone. We're, you're, you're sort of way low there. The reason, uh, the, the frustration of why the town can't compensate for the capacity of the people who want to live here is I've been here all my life, not quite as long as you, but almost, and the restrictions by the planning department placed on housing started 40 years ago. As you know, what, Emsie, you've commented on it a lot. And it's largely, be, and why is that? Why would not they allow the housing base to grow because that grows their tax base? You have to ask, why did they hold housing back for so long? Intelligent housing. Because they, they figured and the they land. were right that that's how they get elected, by telling the, the, the people what they want to hear. That's only part of it, though, MC. That's only part of it because there's, there's another reason behind it. And the Agenda 21 factor in this is very strong, and it doesn't get enough attention, and it needs it because what they want to build in Santa Cruz is what they're starting to build are the high-density high-rises. That's in their plan. They don't want suburbia. They don't want single family. They want little apartments along the metro avenues in the area. It's in the region. This is what they're holding us back. Deborah, your mic is live. Say it. Don't just mouth it. What What are you saying? The logical place for the density housing should be on transportation corridors. But what transportation do we have? We have buses. We have, but there's not only transportation on corridors, there is shopping on corridors. There are jobs on corridors, and it makes it easier for a person who chooses possibly not to have a vehicle um, that they live in that corridor. Our zoning... No, I, Deborah, it, it, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. At this point, it's the only intelligent avenue because... All the buildable land is, has been locked up with foundations, and it's not available anymore for any kind of building. I'm with that. I love the North Coast. I love, every, I love the way everything looks. I love it. It's wonderful. Why was this is such a beautiful area? Because building has been so controlled. But what I'm saying is people don't understand, why is it that I can't buy a lot and build a single-family house for my family without waiting five years for a permit? Why is that? Why can't I remodel a house for a reasonable amount of money and, and make it livable for my family? These are questions that are really important because, you know, the investment, like you say, in the community, building neighborhoods, people outgrow their homes, so they have to move away and find a bigger house. Why can't they make their house bigger? And it's so problematic that that, has, that part of it has to be challenged. That's a very important thing in the Planning Commission, but why have they been so obdurant so shut down, so uncooperative. And I if it's that true that Gavin Newsom has done something that I approve of and really appreciate with the uh, aid, uh, accessory dwelling unit uh, ordinances, striking all of them down and giving and, and making the permit fees free, that's what I've actually heard. I haven't verified that. Is it true? It's wonderful if it's true. Um, but if that's the case, then wh why can't he uh, or the state strike down all the ridiculous ordinances that prevent people from doing what would be good for the community and affordable for themselves and and solve a lot of the problems right. i don't get it i agree with you mary though i think there are some um problems um looking at people getting permits and doing things um, to their homes that allows them to stay in their homes because they need to right. expand. And and I believe, and I will note this down, and I will go have a conversation with the director of, of planning because that's what I do. I go do my research and then look for a better solution. Well, um, just, just, just my comment on this, and this is what, it, it's too large a subject to attack in a little talk show, but don't be surprised when things go dark on you when you go in that direction. And that's what I'm talking about. What do you mean go dark? What? 
Like a that PG, there's a, like a PG and E shut off? No, no. That there's a wall put up in front of you, and it's just either you're yeah. not going to get talked to, or that you're going to get passed around. You're not. Gonna oh, get I talked I don't do well with passing around. I I don't no, like I the. Get that. That's I, like <laughs> I don't like the ping pong no. effect. <laughs> I don't do well with it either. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, but, I am not a ping pong ball anymore with the city, and I and I work with the city on a regular basis. So I do go after what the issues are to make it better for neighbors. Um, but it takes well, that's what a we lot of time. You're, you're campaigning for what all everybody really wants here is a safe, livable neighborhood in a town they want to invest most people the rest of their lives in. Once people have hit Santa Cruz, they've hit Nirvana. My yep. street is people who go this is it for them they go i'll never go anywhere this what is street is that oh, it's off of 26 from right by the station oh my god no, no your neighbor right yeah. yeah okay so right by the station so that but you're dealing oh lot. you're dealing with the county planning department but it's the same oh. attitude it's just very well maybe i need to expand my horizons absolutely you need to do that (laughs) like i have more time (laughs) you're you're on track to becoming the most powerful woman in santa cruz city and county don't want to be and if i have anything to say about it i want to help my 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 sister built a house in the city and i it's the same thing it's it's practically identical that the attitudes of well, I know it's very that's cumbersome. Why, that's why that's why I have the radio station. Because the first talk show <laughs> that God. I did in in 1988 when the station was owned by some other people who were very nice people and I thought my idea to turn it into a talk station might have some merit. They said, give me a sample. And I said, well, how about the planning department? And we went after the planning department and said, we want to reform the planning department. There should be a planning department. It's nice to have planning but be reasonable, well, for God's sakes. Don't, all I don't, don't say, just, get up, yeah. up. All I want to say is, Michael, people like Deborah and people who can, can say what they mean and mean what they say, you need to go after the reason what we're really fighting here is an agenda that is so powerful and so controlling that you, you, they'll, they'll say they invite community input, but they have no intention of right. listening to community. And, and, I, and I, I totally agree with you, Mary. And and I can usually decipher that these days. Okay. Well, have you? Thank ch- you, Deborah. I'll thank get you. Off now. Thanks. All right. I, I won't say what I was going to say, unless you want me to. No. Okay. Good. I- <laughs> <laughs> there's nobody on the line now, and it's just as well because there's no time because we're getting. Is this clock right, Griffin? Griffin Queener. 1058, 32, 33, 34. Okay, good. We're almost ready for the news, right? We're almost ready for the news. Hey, I do have enough time, I think, to uh, read a quick email from 831-428-1527. I have no idea who that is, but this person insists on sending me emails for years with nothing about the name, just the phone number. So he does it through the, he does, not text, but email. So anyhow, this is from 831-428-1527. You just the gave ho- his name. The, the <laughs> homeless problem won't stop until sex and reproduction of crazy people can be stopped. <laughs> How's that for telling it like it probably is? What do you think? I'm not making a comment on that statement. You don't want to make a comment at all? Maybe that, that it's not a nice thing to say? It's definitely not a nice thing to say. Well, you just made a comment okay. on what you said you weren't going to make a comment on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I don't, that's fine. That's fine. It wasn't a very kind thing to say and a, maybe even less kind for me to read it. Uh, but anyhow. They are entitled to their own opinion, yes, though. Yes. Uh, we do not stifle opinion here at KSCO and never will if I, as long as I have anything to do with it. It says K. After that, you are clear into Santa Cruz. The southbound lanes are completely clear from Santa Cruz through to Watsonville. And as for weather, it's 67 degrees out right now. We're going to see a high of 78 today with the rest of the week sitting in the mid to low 70s. It's now 11.06 and Michael is sauntering back into his chair where we will then begin the next hour of the Saturday special. I'm not used to sauntering. You're not used to it? What do you mean? But maybe, maybe that's exactly what I did. (laughs) <laughs> you're the one who observed it, so... Yes, yes. 
Um, I mean, you know, people who saunter irritate me. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Just because they're in no hurry, and I might be in a hurry after them, behind them, and they might. Oh, be... okay. So they're slowing you down. Yeah. Maybe. All right. All right. Yeah. I'd, I'd hate to think that I'm such a person. What did you say? Uh, I Deborah? said maybe they're just being more mindful. Okay. When you it, saunter, okay. you I tend mean, to be more wanna, mindful. I don't want to make Griffin Griffin Queen or any <laughs> any you know self conscious or anything. That's I what... love your voice, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, See, great radio go. voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to start selling essence of it, <laughs> and he's going to do very very well. Dave, Dave Michaels. Hi, Dave Michaels. Hello, MZ. How are you? Fine. Good, good. Nice How show. Are you? It's an interesting show. I like it. Are you having a good time yeah, listening a, yeah, to the program? It's an interesting show. Yeah. That's not a good sign. Why? Because it means that you're there's no but if you have time to listen when you're in the Dave Cave, that means oh. there's no customers. Um, it's been a little slow today. That's, be that's because we had a bunch of sales last week, MZ. Why, why don't we extend it? At least today. Okay. All right. You, I mean, I mean, is that, is okay? are you willing You're to the that? boss. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Buy but two, get one free. only if, if, if during, if between now and noon, let's, let's do it this way. Okay. We don't want to be suckers and do a dumb thing for right. the business. Right. Why don't we say if 50 people come here between now and noon time? Then you'll extend the sale. Okay. And then if they, if they don't, if not enough come by, what do we charge them double? Yes. Okay. We'll make it up that way. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the sale did pretty well. We did all right. Yes. Yes. We not did. We did. just not not. You don't well, we quite want to say all. We still have well. some some stock left, which is good news for anybody who wants to stop by today. We still have some tangy tangerine, uh, gluco gel, osteo FX, <clears throat> arthrodex. You know. It, for years, I've been meaning to do an MZ personal testimonial slash commercial for BTT, for Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Right. Uh, even if it didn't do anything for your body, which it does, mm -hmm. but even if it did nothing for your body, it tastes so damn good. It's why would anybody not want to take it just for the taste, forgetting about the health benefits? Uh, it does taste delicious, and the best part, like you said, MZ, is it's good for you. Because Think it's got so about many minerals. tangerine. Right. Who doesn't like the taste of a tangerine? Okay? And who doesn't like tangy things? Right. If anybody who's, who's listening to me does not like a tangy thing or the taste of a tangerine, then all bets are off. Forget you know, it. I don't know, even want you to come and buy the products. What I like to focus on, MZ, is the minerals that's, that are in there, right? Okay. Because once you get the minerals in your body, things start working like you wouldn't believe. All the little lights start clicking on again. All the bells start ringing. It is amazing stuff. If you've never tried it, everybody has tried vitamins, but minerals uh, nobody seems to pay attention to. Try the Tangy Tangerine, either original or 2.0. 60 minerals in there. You won't believe the way you feel. It will absolutely change uh, change your day, change your week, your month, however long you take it. Now, be honest, Dave Michaels. We like to we we want to positively and accurately guide our audience mm -hmm. here at KSCO, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In all the years you've been doing this, mm -hmm. have you ever met anybody who took the tangy tangy tangerine? and had a negative reaction, who didn't like it, or it didn't do anything for them except make them feel worse. Uh, that's happened twice, and they're both dead. They, did, they, didn't, they, oh. didn't, they, didn't last, they didn't last very long, MZ. <laughs> Wait a second. You know what? Hmm. Is it too late to press the, the, the eight-second delay, the audio condom? I think it is. I think it went past already. Well, you know, uh, you, you got you to uh, take care of yourself. Get the minerals and vitamins. And, yeah, and, but, uh, but you said people are dead. Uh, well, you know, to be in honesty, it's probably happened uh, maybe three or four times, but we either... But get them, weren't, get them weren't the they going to be dead anyhow? We're all going to die. But, but you, you get them the capsules. The, the point is to live a healthier, happier life, right? That's the point. Get the stuff in you, and um, you'd be amazed at how you feel. If you don't like the, the tangy tangerine, we have the capsules too, so you don't have to taste it. All right. How could anybody like? But what I like to say is, if you don't like the taste, you know, um, grow up, right? Because because you got to do something healthy. Now that for was an arrogant sounding statement, well, Dave. You know, but but it, it's it's important. But I totally agree. It's with important you. to do it. You you have we to do it. We at KSCO we try to make it as, as speak our minds. It, it's delicious. And when the fish stinks, it stinks from the head. It tastes good, and it's cheap enough 
it's convenient, you need to do it. Unless you're eating the, the healthiest diet that, that you possibly can, then congratulations. But most of us don't. And uh, Is it not true that even if you do eat the healthiest diet, you're not going to get everything that you need yes. because the soils yes. have long since been depleted? Yes, that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm telling you, try because it. Because you just said unless you're, you, you, you're having well, those, those type the of people, per perfect diet. Those type of people, you can't talk to them. They're convinced that, that nothing else will, will, you know, they're healthy and they don't need anything. Those type of people um, don't show up there. Well, it's their loss, isn't it? Well, you know, anybody who doesn't try it, it, it's, you know, it's their loss. Everybody that has tried it, MZ, has been very happy with it. Like I said, with an exception of a few people, some of them not around anymore. Um, but we just get them different, you know, different Wait things. a minute. Maybe the reason they're not around anymore is not because they took it, but because they didn't like it enough to take it regularly thereafter. I think that's, maybe that's what you mean. Because both Deborah and I were shocked when, mm -hmm. when you said what you said, right? Uh, because of what you said, um, maybe, maybe we because, didn't understand because, because the way I said it. But uh, you know, unfortunately, it's true. We we are miss. You know, I've I've seen a few customers that are not not around anymore, and uh, that's probably the you hardest, haven't seen. That's them. probably the hardest part of doing. you haven't seen them expire. You haven't no, witnessed thank, them expire. Thank goodness, no. You just I assume tried. that they're not around because you saw an, a, 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 an obituary. Or heard through the no, grapevine. No, I see some of them in the obituaries. I do. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not the place you want to be. <laughs> you should head down to the Dave Cave. That's a better place to be. A much better place to be right. is the Dave Cave than right. in the obituary section of the Jeez. newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can make a promo out of that. Save that out. Hey, that's good. You know, all the promos in the world are available by just lifting them off the Saturday special. Who do we have to do that? Everybody's much too busy. I got busy one that I'm working on uh, right now, MZ. I just need to finish the, the tag. With, um... Pull this one, too. Pull, pull, this is a great discussion right now. All right, okay. Dave, Dave Michaels, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, have we done the hour two open, Griffin Queener? Do, do we need to do that? I forgot. I'm not. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Don't worry. I have to make all the dials set just right okay we are going to enter our number two of the saturday special when it's 25 percent gone but it's better late than never oh hello darling i hate to hang up on you but i'm sorry baby but i have to go it's time for You know, the music is up too loud, but but w w when the music is over, we'll say that again. Stand by. I'm sorry, <laughs> baby, but I really gotta go to KSCO Radio. Bye. Now, wh what is it that you're so amused by? Is it watching Gr Griffin Queener masticating? He was, yes, he was um, mouthing the words to that song, <laughs> and it just was perfect. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It was perfect. You made my day. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Griffin, Griffin Queener? <clears throat> Good or bad? Great. I love making people's days. Okay, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, 479-1080 is the phone number you want to call. If you want to join the Saturday special, if you want to bitch about something, Actually, no, we you, want doers. We want doers, not bitchers. Right. You know, KSCO, I like to say KSCO has been cu recently cured of cancer because we don't have as many, we don't have anybody bitching and pissing and moaning anymore. That's, we were getting weighed down by the negativity and toxicity and stuff. It's that, easy to complain, it's harder to do. Yeah, let's, let's it, use let's the station the as a resource for positive change. Fixing. Okay, instead of becoming, instead of adding to the problem. Okay, I'm going to hit take next, and that's going to uh, put Doug in Santa Cruz on the air. Doug wants to talk about housing, don't you, Doug? Yes, I do. How are you doing, Michael? I haven't talked to you for quite a while. 
oh, wait a minute. Is this is this the Doug from Active, like like yeah. 25 years ago? I thought I recognized your voice. Yeah, yeah. I like was beginning to think, ago, yeah. I was starting to worry that you had expired. <laughs> no, I decided to get younger. <laughs> oh, have you been taking our products? I, I have. I'm taking some other some other products and uh, uh, some other helpful stuff, but it was just more of a, a mental decision, you know. Just I, I, I'm a contrarian, and I, I, you know, I see when I see the crowd going one way, I like to go the other way. Okay. Well, that's cool. So nice to welcome you back, Doug. I mean, it has been thank probably you. like 15, 20 years. Yes, and I would uh, like to thank you again for all of the uh, studio time you gave uh, Active. In those days, that was very beneficial, I believe, to the community. But, uh, but yeah, so thank you very much for that. Great. And I, I want to talk to you. You know, I, I don't know if I've ever met Deborah before, but um, uh, you work mostly in Santa Cruz City, is my understanding? Yes, it, within the city. But I have been known to go out into Aptos when requested to mm -hmm. help neighbors. And let me see, Opal Cliffs and a few other places, actually up to Boulder Creek and Felton. Um, so I've been known to go out and help other neighborhoods. Well, the, I, personally, I've worked in the, um, I've been providing housing units here in Santa Cruz County since 1976 was the first home that I designed and, and built. And uh, I, I worked as a, a bit worked as a building designer, you know, since, since then and then built homes uh, to about 2005 and, and now I now I just do uh, mostly land use consultation I I'm one of the uh, uh, jungle guides have you, have you you guys familiar with the term I'm not, no? I'm, not. I'm not no neither of us are the the planning departments are oh. their re <laughs> their regula their regulations are so uh, cryptic and so uh, arcane that one has to has to know the ordinances better than the planners do to be able to get to get projects through. So I hire out in, in that fashion and uh, just just design just kind of real high end stuff. Now you must be a very very wealthy man, Doug. <laughs> no, not not very wealthy, but I'm very very comfortable, and my family is very comfortable. Okay, great. Well, I know there's been yeah. frustration with people finding out that the rules change when they're in the middle of things too mm, yes and that that's that's one of the reasons that a jungle guide is is handy to have on i your like team. that name i get it now wow Be, yeah because they all of the plan well i'm on my fourth round of planners at the uh, approximately at the city and and at the county i've uh, I, <sighs> i've been there i've been there that long and they they i'm 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 nice but i'm persistent and so they they don't tend to change the rules on me because I know what the rules are. So you do and for housing what I do for neighborhoods. I'm a jungle I guide. That. I didn't even know that. Yeah, 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 yeah I believe so. <laughs> and and uh, I, 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 I I like working with the planners. I, I understand the uh, I understand the stress that they're um, involved in. Uh, there's there's good planners and there are bad planners, but they they all suffer from. Uh, having administrators um, just just behind the uh, the counter and the wall behind the counter, that if they if they make too easy of a decision, then they get slapped on the back of the head. So it, it's it's a it's a very stressful occupation for them. But uh, they they chose to go that way. So I get it. To look that. Yeah. Maybe we should have um, junk. What what you, jungle jungle guide? Yeah, jungle guide a radio talk show on KSCO. <laughs> no, that would put Doug out of business. We don't want that. You, 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 you wouldn't want to do that. No, but no, no. it could Maybe. put somebody else in business. I mean, it could put some, the, yeah. whoever did it. People, cause they, people like to do business with the people they feel that they know, like who come into their living room or their car on a regular basis, right? Yes, and uh, no, no. I, uh, someone, someone could definitely make a uh, make a good good career move by. Wow. Learning, so we're going to put it out because yeah. I think that would be a wonderful service to the yep. community. It, it uh, would be because there's so many people that get uh, the wrong information and they get led down the wrong 
<laughs> the wrong jungle path, right? Right. And, and it, it can be financially the devastating. The Jungle Guide radio show on KSEO. What, yeah. When would it yeah. be broadcast? <laughs> would we? From 2, two, two to 2.15 two to two a.m. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's okay. Pe people can set their DVRs, you know, or, or their yeah. computers, or we could set, yeah. it as a, set it up as a podcast. I, I, I was, was talking to pharmacist Ben Fuchs on the way down <laughs> from San Francisco today. We're going to do a pharmacist Ben 60 to 90 second daily, you know, push out thing. And, and we, we, I think we're going to have in the hundreds of thousands of people subscribing to this. Because he, he does good stuff, you know. Yeah, no, he does. So. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. okay, hey, Doug, great so, to hear from you. No, I'm so was, happy you haven't expired. There, there was actually something that I wanted to discuss real quickly. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, unless, you have, unless you're jammed up. I we, can we, are go pretty, we are pretty jammed, you know, so. Uh, well, well let, me, let, me, let me drop this real quick then, okay? Um, about six months ago, Christopher Crone and um, the... Uh, I forget the other fellow who's getting recalled and one other. Drew Glover. City, yeah, Glover and another council member. They all uh, um, joined in on uh, this uh, move by Chrome to um, to make ADUs to make them so that you could only rent them for low-income housing rates, which, um, which would kill off all uh, creation of ADUs in the uh, in the city of santa cruz now that got doesn't state doesn't state law trump that's what someone said you know, yes and I, i've been and very gavin, do, you, do you know about what gavin newsom signed and i haven't had enough time to check into it but that's a really it's landmark that's, legislation if it's true if it's what i think it is yeah it's very recent i haven't i haven't read it yet i've, I've heard it was coming by some of the planners have been have been waiting for this and so they, it, it's, they're really taking away the authority of the planning departments in, in regards to ADUs. Um, and it, it's a fantastic thing. It, re it really is. I, 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 I applaud the state, and I, I, you know me, I rarely applaud anything that the state does. I do know you. Okay, well, thank you very much for calling 479-1080, Doug. Very take, good. take care. Here's Colonel Terry. Hey, I was thinking of you. I was thinking of you when I, I was thinking that you better talk to your attorney, because there's somebody else out there who's using smart talk, and I know that belongs to you. Nobody can you. Am, am I right? It copyrighted and uh, Writers Guild registered. Yes. Okay. It was. It was somebody. Gosh. I'm, I'm no, sorry. don't worry about it. It's, uh, don't. What I wanted to call in was, in the interest of time, <clears throat> uh, I am having both tangy tangerine and pollen burst right now at this moment in a tall glass of cold mountain water. Together? Like, mixed? Yeah, I like the mix. Tangy tangerine and pollen burst. Tell Dave he ought to suggest that to customers. They buy both. Okay. More, now, more importantly, um, the promo lady... The voice of the promo lady. Do you have any photos showing that she is as gorgeous and beautiful and as enticing as she sounds? The promo lady is Rosie. Oh, no, no, no. The, no, the opening think, from years ago, you're... Oh, 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 no, no. I've, I've talked about that before. This, this woman would be in her hundreds now. Oh, but do you have any... If, if she's still living. Do you have any photos of her? No, no, I wish. I, I've said that many times. I, a, I've put it out. You, 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 there might be somebody whose relative worked for KSCO in the early days who might have had something like that that you find in an attic or something. What, what's her name? I don't know that either. Oh. Here, this is, this, is no, what, I, I, this is what Colonel Terry is talking about. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hello, darling. I hate to hang up on you. But I'm sorry, baby, but I have to go. It's time for that wonderful record show. I'd love to visit, but you'll have to call back. KSCO has the inside track. And when I was a kid growing up in the 50s, I thought this was a little racy for KSCO, you know, Montevani music, you know, uh, retirement people. But 
it was run nevertheless, and I run it all the time. I'm sorry, baby, but I really gotta go to KSEO Radio. Bye. All right, so so uh, you people have heard me say the the most beautiful. <laughs> A female voice of all time, in my opinion, is that of Karen Carpenter. This is a close second, whoever she is. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, uh, recorded in the 50, 50s or late 40s. Yeah. Okay, now, the next topic is uh, KSCO confronting the plan, exposing the planning department. You made reference to that, and that was done with Tom Quinn. I... I no, 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 no. I mean, we Tom on, on perspectives. That was one of Tom's favorite topics, okay. and I think Dr. Biles occasionally does that too. We don't want to be enemies with the planning department. We want to be their friends. We oh. want to show them that they can be friendly and responsible to the community and still do a good job of really planning instead of just stopping. <laughs> you know, uh, MZ. Uh the lady also mentioned uh, that we must have to recognize uh, the real facts or recognize something, and so did you. Look, um, we have to recognize the real facts about Santa Cruz County government and the planning department in order to formulate real corrective solutions. The, the uh, Citizens Alliance for Change proved, demonstrated, and in effect litigated corrective measures in behalf of dozens of people the planning department was treating unjustly and unfairly. Um, and in fact, uh, I put an article in the paper indicating that some Santa Cruz County Superior Court judges demonstrate injudicious incompetence, unethical bias, unfair prejudices by their unjustly siding with the county government and its planning department, represented by an unethical behaving county council and staff who were defeated in part in past years by the Citizens Alliance. I've got boxes of evidence proving what I just said. Um, with all due courtesy to the lady, people are still being abused by the planning department. Developers and real estate people I've talked to who build things all over California tell me that Santa Cruz County's planning department is the worst in the state to deal with in terms of being treated fairly, unless you're one of the insiders like Swenson here in the county. That's the reality and facts. And maybe KSO should revive so we have recognition of the problem and we can focus on corrective solutions that bring justice in the planning department process here in Santa Cruz County. What did you say about, uh, that, what, what did you say about KSO reviving? What? Huh? They want to revive your, your, your monitoring of the planning department, helping them be better. I'm happy to help them be better. I can give them 40 reasons and, and, and 12 mechanisms they should improve but um, our planning department is a ga is a huge gouger of money from people we have a planning department enforcement staff that is has more people doing that than any other county except los angeles we have been overburdened with planning department enforcement and rigmarole those are the you provable know, facts. Terry, this might have been uh, a phone call. Might as well have been a phone call from 1988, because nothing has changed. You know, as well, far, I've got a plan. As to... far as I know, but and I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's been a number of changes, but I don't. I don't go there. I, I just don't. It, it takes too much out of me, so I, I avoid the planning department. You know? I, do, I, I have a strategy and a plan to fix it all. For, for benefit of all Santa Cruz property owners and residents. Enough said. We'll talk about it. We'll have lunch on it. Okay. Thank you, Colonel Terry. What is Deborah's job? Well, well, Deborah is an activist. Good. Right? Did I say anything wrong? You... No. I, I advocate for the 60% in the middle with neighborhoods and Good neighbors. Good for you. Yeah. Do you have an organization doing this that I can send you a contribution? <laughs> santacruzneighbors.org fine we'll find you and that's the way you can find me as well through that okay, email. i wish you every continued success nice lady okay. thank you there we go there goes colonel terry here's nick in pacific grove hi oh, nick. my name's steve it doesn't matter hey uh hi, hi mz thank you for your show hello deborah hello um you've had the great big pictures between terry and that gentleman who came back from the dead H how about the small picture as far as building 
on a granny house. Yeah. And most of Monterey County, they, they finally got smart since, the, you know, there's really not that many lots to develop around the area. So you have to have a certain amount of parking. If they're going to tie into your uh, waterlet, which, which is a big deal, and tie into your sewer. But what makes, I'm, I'm a contra- contractor, it makes a lot of my friends worried about this stuff. Instead of building the outlaw one, like most of our friends do that are listening here, is the new law that if, let's say, you, you, you do everything legally, You've got to accept Section 8 housing. And not to say that they're all a bunch of deadbeats or this or that. You can't pick and choose the people you want living in your backyard. So let's say you go, you jump hey, through all the I, I like that. You have to accept it. Well, no, wait a minute. I, maybe, no, uh, Debbie is shaking no, her you head. Can get so a maybe I, maybe I shouldn't like it. You know me. I'm influenced by the last person I interact with. <laughs> um, well, you, now, wait a minute. i got to think about this. I think people, suppose they nod and say, okay, I accept Section 8, but then they go with a non-Section 8. They're just giving it lip service. You don't want to force them to accept Section 8 if they don't want to. Personally, I think... What? That's the new law. If you have a rental unit, and uh, see, that's what's scaring a lot of my developer. Like, we're small time. You, You just talked to a couple of the big shots. I'm talking small-time contractors. I've helped build a lot of people do illegal and legal granny houses, and especially around this part of town. You, you really, you know, if you got good neighbors and keep it low-key and everything, you know, every, everybody's nice. It's a nice town. You know what I mean? But if if you if you do decide to jump through the hoops, which isn't easy, going like you're talking about, you love going through the city planners, right? Having to snoop around your business. And I got to give the, the town around here a little bit of credit. They decided, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to let a few granny houses in because there isn't that many places left to do it. I, I don't know very few people that have enough property that they can develop their garage or, or their back lot into a place. And to let the city use their water lets, which is like more precious than gold in this town, to tie in and their sewer because, I mean, that's a money-making proposition for the city. Whenever you put a new water, a new uh, a meter in for whatever, man, that's extra dough forever till the end of time for them. So, like, they kind of bit the bullet on that one. Uh-huh. But a lot of people that I know that do have the, 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 the opportunity to build the granny houses are scared to death that they're going to have to let anybody, that's, you know, the state wants in there, in there. You understand what I'm trying to say? That kills it all. That would kill it for me. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Geez, thanks for scaring the hell out of me and impressing me. <laughs> I'm sorry, MC. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. But that's what KSEO is all about. You, you, you know, just tell it, telling it like or as it is. Uh, appreciate your call. Um, uh, f- uh, and here's our next call. Uh, wait a minute. Flinks from Aptos, who has a suggestion? Actually, I was distracted by Colonel Terry. I like Colonel Terry. But he kind of bludgeons you with his adjectives. And you, if I was a teacher, I wondered what his teachers were like. Like, they must have been terrified when they got his papers. Like, oh, my God, what am I going to get today? Maybe he bludgeoned uh, them. Oh, or maybe they bludgeoned sentences. him. No, but You his, are his, what you hate. I you, like to write. You, you become stuff, so what helps. you hate. I like to write a lot, so it helps to listen to him because you get all these adjectives that you don't think to use, you know, or explanations or expletives or whatever that aren't that aren't graphic or or bad. Colonel today, Terry right? has a PhD in indignance. Yeah, but he's complex. I would love to read some of the stuff he writes if he yeah. does any writing. Very, very Anyways, smart I, I wanted to say I think it'd be awesome to have a show with Charles Friedman. I don't know if you have to pay him overtime to come on your show and do a show about the old standard music like it he's amazing with his knowledge and stuff on that now i might be like you know brown nosing him a little bit here but i i i love charles friedman and when he does his music um uh history and uh, i don't know if you'd want to do that but you seem to like music and singing and and well and i'd wonder what his uh, what his opinion on karen carpenter would be because i think you're you hit the nail on the head she would have been beautiful back in the 20s and 30s with their voice she could nail them anyway wow. I'll, I'll take your answer up here okay my answer is uh if charlie wants to do a music program we should uh somehow figure out a way to do that um because enough old people are still living 
who listen to KSCO who would appreciate that, right? And all of us who listen to KSCO currently are getting older every minute. So Flinks' idea is probably a really good one. Downtown Al, one of my favorite callers. Hey, Michael and Deborah. Hey, you know, how come Santa Cruz doesn't have a skid row? A lot of the towns I grew up in or nearby or lived in, they had a skid row. And that's where all the uh, the winos could go or drug addicts. And they kind of know, they kind of knew that you couldn't do certain things. What, in other what parts about, isn't Beach Flat sort of in that category? No, you're shaking your head. Well, right now it's more like Coral Street. Bingo. Uh, oh. So, um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, the on, thing the, is, on the way out from Costco, yeah. Yeah, the thing is, when you had a skid row like that, it was an area where you could maybe lay on the street drunk and whatever else, but you weren't allowed to do it in, like, the business section or, uh, you know, in the nicer neighborhoods. And I mean, I know because I lived in places like that, south side of San, south San Francisco Street in Flagstaff, Arizona, where, you know, you'd see people getting their ears bit off and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a house of prostitution right next door, and, uh, well, you know. So. Well, think about the businesses, though, on Coral Street that are trying to do business. Well, yeah, I know Seaborg. They're not open anymore, are they? And yes, they are. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because every time I go there, it's just this huge crowd of people. But, you know, maybe they could be bought out or something because it just seems like the police can't keep up with it. And, and this It's not is a not real police job. And, well, you know, there's another issue I have, and one of is, I don't know if they do enough curbside justice, and maybe they can't do that. But, you know, every time I see something, like I see a guy with a shopping cart, I go, I know that's stolen property, right? It's from Trader Correct. Joe's or whatever else. How come the cops, without making a big deal of it, can't stop them, empty out all their stuff and say, that's not yours, and throw it in the trunk of their car or call up and have somebody pick it up and haul it off? We used to have a company that did that in Santa Cruz. And, you know, to where it isn't this issue, oh, we got to write a ticket, we've got to, like, take them to jail or whatever. I mean, they're doing that anyway. Hey, Deborah and Downtown Al, this just in in the email. <clears throat> Again, from 831-428-1527. For the rest of the country, all of Santa Cruz is skid row. <laughs> That's depressing. But do you, you know, believe it, or do you think that's an exaggeration? Well, if you talked to me earlier on in the week, I was feeling exactly that. But, you know, a lot, a lot of times, because when I would go um, down to the intersection, you know, Highway 9 and uh, Highway 1 there, coming off of uh, River Street there, I have to be really, really careful because, you know, there's that chiropractic office there in the Gateway Center and whatever, and there's that one area you got to keep clear. Well, people just run across in traffic or they stagger off the the sidewalk. And, you know, you're trying to merge with traffic, maybe making a right-hand turn. And I don't know if one of these guys is going to fall in front of me or, you know, they're out there in the median soliciting with, a you know, a card. And I really think the cops need to run them off. Well, and it's got, they're, they're not everywhere, but if you observe something like that, you should call in for a welfare check. Well, you know, because a lot of it, it's CHP, um, you know, or Caltrans. No, our, our, at that intersection, areas. our officers at Santa Cruz PD will answer that one. Okay. Um, so you can always call in for a welfare check. Okay. But, you know, I'd like to see more of that to where it doesn't take up too much of the officer's time. They don't necessarily write a ticket or cost us by putting somebody in jail or into the judicial system, which never seems to do anything anyway. But they stop the misbehavior. They, 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 they take those calls all the time, but they need your eyes and ears in order to do that. Okay. Well, like, for instance, like when I'm starting to merge to go on Highway 1 South, kind of, you know, past Emmeline there, um, there's been a lot of people running across, um, you know, the... The freeway. The freeway there because they're camping out in the middle of it. Correct. And I'm, you know... I'm Which you can to report to Caltrans. Or, okay. <laughs> Anyway, I'd, I'd like to see more of that, and I don't know how far the police department can do that in terms of just kind of stopping the behavior without a bunch of bureaucratic entanglement or expense to the stock due to um, the taxpayers. So I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion here. Okay. When someone like you sees those types of things, you can call the 
non-emergency number, which is 471-1131, which okay. goes up to our regional um, dispatch. And officers will answer those calls. They are low priority calls, but they will answer them. And as far as camping along the freeway, I look at it as if I report it, um, that I'm saving their lives. If there's an accident that happens and a car goes out of control and it's within that Caltrans, you know, buffer zone, um, they're in danger. That's a safety thing. Right. Um, and you can report that. I don't remember whether we are Region 4 or 5, but we are lumped in with San Luis Obispo. You can go to the Caltrans uh, website and report that, report encampments. Okay, well, I, um, I will do that. I mean, I, you know, I, I have an occasion a long time ago, um, but I haven't done it recently. Um, but, you know, my, my other point, too, is when an officer sees it, because I've seen them just driving by, and, yeah, maybe they got more important business, but they at least need to get on their PA and say, hey, get the heck out of there or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, that was one point I had. And, you know, the other thing is um, I last year I had a friend have her truck stolen, and this was up um, Prospect Heights, which is, you know, a fairly decent neighborhood not too far from – um, you know, Morrissey, and um, it was three guys. They got busted up in Half Moon Bay. They all had crack pipes in the car. They'd already stolen the stereo, and they'd taken about $2,000 in tools. She's a widow who has a, um, a gardening business, so she can pay for her mortgage up there in Prospect Heights. And supposedly these guys were checked in, and uh, they had ID, and they were supposed to pay her $2,000. Well, San Mateo Sheriff's Department or their judicial system somehow let them go, um, and it turns out they think they didn't have the right ID. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, like, wondering how this sort of stuff happens because I, and I also had a – so anyway, they also um, blew up her engine, which she didn't know until later. So, you know, basically, she basically lost the vehicle and a bunch of tools. They stole the, the um, radio out of it. So, I mean, it definitely goes on uh, in this town. And I had another friend, an older lady, who had her vehicle stolen, and it was a homeless guy. There were drugs found in it later when it was finally recovered, and he, he repainted it with a paintbrush, a different color. And then, of course, he crashed it into an RV, and he had different plates on it. And our police department, or at least the salvage yard, didn't have the sense to check, check the VIN number on it. So it sat in um, an impoundment yard for six months before somebody had the sense to look at the VIN number and notice that the plates had been changed. Well, so, I, I, um, can, I can tell you that, of course, when my truck got stolen, that I immediately started doing research and set out the network and asked questions. We've had 71 vehicles stolen in the city of Santa Cruz since April 14th. I could only go back six months mm -hmm. on the crime map. That is unacceptable to me. Um, and we have a bicycle stolen probably every day. So one to two vehicles are being stolen out of Santa Cruz. That is totally unacceptable. And I've been told that's a low number compared to things in the past. It's still unacceptable to me. Hey, we got a so, lot. We got a full board here. So uh, yeah, thanks I, uh, for downtown. Anyway, hey, thanks, Deborah, for all that you do. Um, and you are doing positive stuff there. But I just want to say everything to everybody. If you do ever have to file a police report, get a copy of it. Because oftentimes uh, I like to support the cops, but they don't always necessarily do the job that they need do to, to uh, decrease crime and keep us safer. Okay, so, thank you, Al. Okay. Here's uh, John Miller, the John Miller. Yes, guys. John, why are you so quiet? We hate dead air me? here at KSCO. Can you can you not hear me? We hear you fine. Can you not hear? Yeah. Can you not hear me? Yeah, I said here's the John Miller, and then there was silence. Oh, I was just taking it all in. All right, so, I guess he doesn't get it here. There goes John Miller. So, Here's, here comes Pete for the recall. We want to talk about the recall. Okay, now. yes. Okay. Yeah, hi, hi, Deborah. This is, uh, I've talked to you before. I'm a uh, canvasser for uh, signatures. 
and I really appreciate what you're doing, and I find it uh, kind of disrespectful, all the letters they're printing in the paper trying to make this into some uh, big money uh, backed proposition or recall because they don't go down into the meetings and see the actual homeowners, property owners that are there that are behind this, like you yourself. Right. But I was, um, I just wanted to call in and say, hey, don't believe what you read in the Sentinel because it's. You can't even believe what you read on checking. next door. <laughs> yeah. So I, I am a, I am a citizen of Santa Cruz, and I go out there and get petitions. So it's what they're saying in the paper is wrong. It's not a big finance. Uh, production. It's local people that are very concerned. And on that line, do you know how we stand? We only have, what, 10 more days? Yep. Um, I have been also out there uh, pounding pavement and collecting signatures because I believe that everybody should have a voice in this. Um, and the signatures are only being gathered in order to get it on the ballot. And then everybody can have a say. And I think that's very important and very critical and it really is a democratic process it's not an easy democratic process um and i also want to address you know i saw a letter in the sentinel which i um have done my research and i completely agree with um contrary to what the opposition has been saying about where donations are coming from and who the signatures are and all of this, it's been my experience, and believe me, it took me three months to make my decision about being um, involved because I try to stay in the middle. I don't necessarily take a stand one way or the other, but I felt very compelled that we are at a turning point in Santa Cruz. Um, so the people that I have talked to all over the city of Santa Cruz are from all different age groups, all different political parties. The money that has come in to support the recall effort um, has mostly been, uh, you know, the $99 donations from everywhere um, yes. in this community. Um, 82%, it was quoted that 82% of all the donations are under $100. And I would even go to say that 90% of the people that signed those signatures were all collected by amazing volunteers that yep. have worked. And they're all from very diverse um, areas in the community and all over the map. I mean, truly, I believe this does represent our community. You know, it's funny to me I, I when I've gone door to door, a lot of people, uh, uh, maybe half, say I don't know the issues well enough to make a decision, you know. And so, which just shocks me, like, that this day and age, people would say to me, oh, there's a recall? Is that really going on? And I'm like, but, wow. But as I you said before, these are people who are super busy. They're trying yeah. to keep their head above water, earning a living, taking care of their kids, getting them to school, yeah. doing everyday life. They don't yeah. have time to always pay attention to the crazy sometimes politics that are going on in this town. So, so I would say 90% of the people that I went to, once I kind of had a little conversation, were totally supportive of it. They were like, wow, I was finally waiting for something yeah, to be I, done. I think the community and, has been awoken up. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can, the they can go I've, to the Santa Cruz United website. There is actually a learn more, um, with, uh, 22 reasons why, and that list has been added to since day one in the beginning, which was, you know, mid June and the facts are there with no personal comments. I mean, the news yeah. articles are there, the KSEO radio shows are linked there, um, so people can just listen um, to the radio shows and the interviews with Drew Glover and Chris Crone. Um, they can uh, watch city council meetings that uh, have been time stamped in a, you can print out your page and uh, watch the city council meetings so you don't have to sit through 10 hours. Who has 10 hours to sit through watching a city council meeting? So. They're time-stamped, and, and you can just go do your own research and make up your own mind. 
We want yeah, I would s- recommend somebody go to a meeting, go down to a meeting and actually see for yourself, like you said, because it'll open your eyes at yep. the dysfunction. Yeah, or watch it on TV. Watch it on Channel 5. Yeah. I mean, 25, right. community yeah. TV. Thank, thank, thank you, Michael Z, for your time, and thank you, uh, Deborah. I appreciate it. Really do. Welcome. Thanks appreciate for the call. Appreciate the uh, call, yeah. Okay, here's uh, Rory. I think you want to talk about housing. We, 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 Briefly. It's, it's sort of Briefly. nice to, to talk a little bit more about the recall. I'm sure we're going to be doing okay, that in I'll, future I'll, calls. I'll, but Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, the Section 18 requirements, Deborah, are you aware of that? Is that a state or federal requirement? Section 8 or Section 8? Yeah, they die in Monterey, Pacific Grove. So anytime you oh. bring a new unit online, you got to be willing no, that's, to rent it. No, that's totally a new – it must be a new thing, and I, I have not had time, okay. frankly. Okay, this, this is what I suspect it is. It's furthering fair or affordable fair housing, which was a – federal rule that was brought in by uh, Obama on his in his last year Fair, uh, furthering anyway I you know they got they string these acronyms along but the point is they're bringing the hood to you is the bottom line and I suspect that's what this law is it's a federal requirement fairly furthering affirmative housing well when I so, get some anyway, time I will be doing the research yeah, yeah, check that out. It, what, what's your website? And I can link an article. You can read up on it. Uh, you can email me at email at santacruzneighbors.com or dot org. Okay, and then you and you it's santacruzneighbors.org. Okay, santacruzneighbors.org. Keep up the good work. The one time I heard Drew Glover on the radio, he's a Marxist. He's a stone-hearted Marxist. I mean, it's just it's not the American way. So keep up the good work. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Well, and I have had personal with a lot of Santa Cruzans. Yeah, actually, I have had Section Eight housing um, experiences that have not been happy ones, and I will never do it again. It's unfortunate. Personally. Personally, I yes. See. Wow. I okay. mean, for a while there, it worked really well, but then it's it went sideways when the the person's kids got involved and then they feel like they're entitled to section 8 housing as well it 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 didn't seem it didn't seem quite right that something that gavin newsom would sign uh involving a accessory dwelling it seemed too good to be true that there wouldn't be a string attached like you must Rent to Section 8 or forget it. Right. You and know, I maybe, tend not so, to talk I mean, about things until I've until got the facts. Know, yeah, and, and I shouldn't <laughs> either, but I would love to be I try to keep ha- as, happy, out. as happy as I would like to be when I find out more about this thing. Yeah, we'll both Okay, into well, it. it looks like we've got five minutes left, and the gentleman who uh, called earlier uh, is back on, John Miller, on a different yes. phone. What's up, John? Correct. I am... What's yes. up? What's up? Get to the point, please. Well, did my understanding was you guys ha- wanted to talk with me about a CD of mine. What? Is this new information to you? Yeah, yeah very new information. To, we don't do CDs here. You must be have us confused with another radio station. So, oh God, how does that happen? Uh, Griffin and Queen, you got to do a better job. I love you, but you got to do a better job of screening. I mean, that guy was wrong. <laughs> Uh, did he did he tell you did he lie about what he was going to say? Yeah, he absolutely lied. What did he what was he going to say? I'm assuming you're talking about we're you talking about John Miller again. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, he came on and was like I have an interview with MZ and I said he didn't seem like you had an interview with MZ before uh when he picked you up and then he said no, I definitely do and was like it's scheduled for 11:30 blah 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 and I was like Okay, I mean, I don't want to screw up an interview if there's supposed to be one, but uh, I okay. guess he just lied. Yeah. Can I just say also that they can go, I want to go back to the recall thing because I know we're running out of time, um, that they can still sign um, the petition for the recall and they can go to Whole Foods, they can go to the Surfer Statue, there's people walking neighborhoods, you can email Santa Cruz United, go to the website for information. They'll even come to your house to get your signature. Um, with a smile, I'm sure. So um, really, we're still collecting signatures. The deadline is coming up on October 22nd. And we need all the signatures we possibly can get. Um, 
Rosie, Let's make this Rosie, fair and Rosie's, have a voice. Yeah, and, and I do want to make it fair too because I want to I want to provide a voice to the people who are the subject of the recall. Let's put and, it on the ballot and have everybody have a voice. And no, no, even have a voice on KSU about why the people should not be recalled, and so forth. But, but I, I think, I mean, I, I, I'm not here on a day-to-day -day basis, but I know that's the way we've yep. w tried to run KSU. Right. We, we offer the points of view and the, we offer airtime to everybody. But I hope they can stick to the facts. Uh huh. The uh, truth. Yeah. So, but uh, but a lot of times they just people don't want to participate, and they're usually the people. Um, well, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that. So, um, okay. Well, we've got uh, we've got uh, three more. I can also talk about another so opportunity. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. If um, anybody is interested in how our police department does work, they're very open. You can have a meet and greet with the chief. You can talk to him about your concerns. You can volunteer for the police department. Um, there are lots of opportunities visiting um, shut-ins or older people. There's a YANA program. There is a vehicle abatement program. There is when you go out on vacation and you want your house looked on and some extra eyes. There's a vacation program that's being set up. There are very lots of opportunities to be involved, and it's on your time. You don't have to do so many hours per month or so many hours per week. It's on your time. Um, if you feel like that's an interest to you, it's really worthwhile and Casey, really positive. Casey Tiefer Tiller sends the following email. Who's also a classmate. <laughs> oh, yeah. General assistance Hi, uh, payments. Z, does Ms. Elston know how much Santa Cruz currently pays in general assistance? In the past, Santa Cruz County paid one of the highest general assistance rates in the nation, which served to draw homeless to Santa Cruz. I'd say besides the climate. I don't right? know what the amount is specifically. Reducing general assistance might serve to make Santa Cruz less of a draw to outside homeless, making this a destination. Okay. That has been a question that I've been. It's been on. It's been on the table for a long time. I have not dove, dove into it. It's a good question. Encampments for Caltrans one eight zero five. Four four one five seven one two. That's offered by Ronald Perigo Jr. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Ronald. And Perigo Ron is Jr. involved in those cleanups. Right. Uh, okay. So, uh, hey, that's it. Uh, thank you for coming down. Thank Deborah. you for having me, Michael. Yeah, and Griffin, Griffin Queener, you done good, but but they got past you and and anybody they would have gotten past anybody wow so anyhow um gee and, and dr biles is up next with perspectives from 12 to 1 and uh continued uh success for you thank you for uh, all all you do in being a uh, advocate for neighborhoods and this is the end of the saturday special for um wonderful K to be uh, here and, and you know what i forgot that i'm supposed to play this uh, the, the, that's all folks here so here it is here.